Um, so I'm here with uh, Colin West, uh, uh, director of writer and director of Linoleum, and um, hello, hello. I I, I kind of want to start with Jim Gaffigan, but uh, and, and I hope I'm saying the name right, Caitlin Nakin. Caitlin Nacon, yes. Caitlin Nacon. Uh, we just covered, uh, we just recorded our uh, this week's episode and we covered, uh, she was in a movie coming out this week called Devil's Peak. Oh, yeah. And uh, she's, so she's got she's got a one-two banger like back to back. So that's kind of She's fun. killing it. She's got three films going on right now. Like, it's crazy. And they're all like, it was funny. I remember sort of like talking to her about all these different projects she was working on. And uh, like, as we were shooting Linoleum and She's like, you know, she's like, oh, I wonder when they're all going to come out. And literally, it's all like within the a couple of weeks, he's got these, like all these projects. It's great. It's really great. I'm happy for her. She's an incredible actor. Yeah. And I, I want to jump to Jim Gaffigan. Um, he's sure. fantastic in this. Um, so much so that, uh, you know, him is Cameron. Um, and I kept uh, the, the, he also plays uh, Kent Armstrong. And Correct. I was like, oh, who's that guy playing Ken Armstrong? He's such a <laughs> oh wait oh wait that that that's him but yeah, it, like yeah. pe people get so people get so um surprised when comedians turn out to be great actors and uh i loved him in this loved him in troop zero obviously loved to stand up but uh yeah. he's like next level in this like to the point where his different characters are actually different characters and i, I just see him as two different people Totally, Eric. I'm glad that you're you're latching on to that. I think Jim really is. Uh, he's got um, such talent that I'm glad like is being really recognized here. Obviously, he's done some other dramatic roles and, and stuff like that, too. Um, but uh, but it's great to see sort of like the recognition start to happening, especially around this film. I mean, he's he because he, it's it's interesting, like he's always he's always had a, you know, wanted wanted to do and has been doing sort of dramatic roles here and there. And um it's funny. I remember talking to him on on set, and and he was like, "Colin, you know, if I could do indie films from Monday to Monday to Thursday, and then do stand up Friday to Sunday, I'd be a happy man." Um, so he just loves it. I mean, I think he loves interesting stories and interesting characters. And obviously, this one was a was definitely a, a, a another sort of additional challenge in that he did play these two characters um, who were sort of like really um, sort of psychologically, physically very different people and uh it was it was actually quite interesting to work with him on set on especially on the days that he played both where you know he'd play one person in the morning and then we'd put a wig on him and do all the different clothing and then he'd come back the afternoon and play the other side um he's he would really sort of turn into a different person you know he'd put that suit on for Kent and become like this very sort of stoic you know guy that nobody wanted to mess with on set you know and then when he was his sort of main, you know, Cameron, everybody was, you know, he's the the, the gym we all know and love. But um, yeah, he's a really impressive actor with a great collaborator. Now, how, how did you get him for this? Um, did you have to have him read through? Because if Cameron and Kent don't work as two different people, I don't know that the, the, the I, I won't say the movie falls apart, but it, it's not as strong as it could be. How, how did you know sure. going in that he could pull that off? Uh, Look, not, I, not, not just him being a comedic actor, but I think just actors in general might have issues with that. Absolutely. I mean, but but it's kind of like, to me, I think like talent translates and they're like knowing how talented he is as a as a comedian, how confident he is. Look, like performing for him is nothing new. Like he goes on these tours where he's doing stand up every night for, you know, hours and hours at a time. And for for months you know on end and um so there is this comfort that he has you know especially even just talking to him he's a really grounded honest individual and i think that was um it was very easy to latch on to that and see like uh the ways in which we could sort of like lean into that version of him and also sort of do you know have a heart to heart and talk about like this other sort of like yeah this this darker character that he has to play as kent um, and it didn't, I mean, we didn't do any, you know, we didn't do read throughs and stuff like that. It wasn't, it wasn't, it was because to me, like, I, I know the talent is there. Like I can see the character in him, especially I think because I'm also the writer on this project that, you know, the, the project was sort of like really born within, you know, the confines of my brain. And so I can see sort of like, I can see it working, you know, and, and it's just following your gut and in, in such a way that, um, that it really worked. And he, you know, on our first phone call, you know, 
what came in with all these really amazing ideas about how he wanted to approach both characters and and taking it really seriously and in a way that like I could see that he was you know um genuine about it he's he wasn't you know obviously we didn't you know this is a small film like we didn't give him a big paycheck or anything like that it was he did it as out of passion and and he's I think it's really great that that um that he's being recognized for for sure yeah, I also want to get into some spoilers at the end, uh, but before okay. we do that, that we can cut out and put, you know, I, after the movie comes out. Sure. But um, before we get to that, what uh, what is linoleum? I know what linoleum floor is, but the 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 title didn't connect with the with the movie. Sure, sure. So linoleum, the title, uh, it it. We so linoleum itself is yes, it's a flooring, it's a type of flooring, and we kind of joke at festivals that like it's our it's our documentary about flooring, you know. Um, but uh, but it's it's essentially it comes down to the idea um, of bringing the fantastic to something simple, and um, linoleum flooring being this uh, obviously surface that we ended up using the same sort of like dark red burgundy linoleum flooring throughout the whole movie and every set that we uh, constructed or went to. So we'd let, we'd get there. And the first thing we do is lay down a bunch of this linoleum all over the floor. Now, is it like the main character in the film? No, like, but we do have, you know, we do sort of focus on it. And what we were trying to do was kind of tie this world together subjectively through the point of view of our lead character who you find out within the first two minutes that he's an unreliable sort of narrator so um you know how, how it, looking at like the the basement set of the movie which is like sort of the we would always call it the brain of the movie which is where sort of all of these you know pieces of the film um are drawn from is this basement um starting from there and seeing like how can we use all of those props and everything in that room again in a different part of the movie. And so that's what we ended up doing was actually kind of drawing out that stuff. And the flooring ended up being like this kind of cohesive um, uh, kind of material that drew it all together. And also the fact that like that kind of speckled pattern really looks like the cosmos, you know, but it's down instead of up. I thought it was this sort of nice kind of idea. Um, and again, like, you know, this way in which it's it's titled linoleum, I think also sort of gets you in the mood for like, wait a minute, like it starts, it gets you asking questions like immediately, which I think is kind of the the puzzle of it, which is um, what I really appreciate about that too. Oh, it's not that easy, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I do I do love the theme of it's not that easy uh, going yeah. through it. It kind of inspired me on other things like uh, just I, in my own life and uh, projects I want to do is like, you know, maybe it is. You, you just got to go for it. And, and I love the I love the idea behind that. Well, thanks, Eric. Yeah, that that whole idea. And I think I think the quote is it's not that simple. And they keep every character in the movie says that um, at some point in the film or another. And it's really interesting because um, that's a very scientific concept. Um, this idea that the simplest idea is the simplest answer is usually the right one. Um, often in science, that's like a very sort of like um, uh, quick go to. Um, and I think that like bringing that and other sort of scientific concepts concepts into the movie thematically really I think helped kind of build out this this world and sort of this emotional core via like this conceit of science you know yeah. what I'm saying yeah and in fact uh you uh says here you uh won a Sloan Science of the Screen Award and th this movie is pretty science heavy which I totally appreciate yeah, it is. And we were really honored to get this Sloan Science Cinema Prize um, over at San Francisco F Film Festival. Um, yeah, they, they were a great supporter with us, you know, and um, I think, you know, liked the way and, and I, I appreciate this too, the way in which it uses science sort of emotionally to tell the story. Um, it isn't necessarily about the nuts and bolts of science. Like that isn't what we get into. It's really more about like how these scientific concepts have worked their way into our own kind of like emotional um, construction rather than the physical construction of the outside world. We're also looking in. So that was, um, uh, but yeah, I feel very, very uh, indebted to them too. So, yeah. Well, um, they, uh, I wanted to do some uh, spoiler question. I don't know if we have time, but uh, <laughs> uh, my, I, I do have to ask this because uh, my uh, co-host Bruce has a box. We have a what's in the box segment. And Ooh, what's people, in the box? We have people put movies in the box, maybe lesser seen movies or maybe uh, movies uh, from your past that mean something to you. And uh, he puts the movie into the uh, box 
And I would like you to put a movie into the box that he can pull out. He pulls one out every week and then we watch it for the next week. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. fantastic. Oh, man. That's so exciting. Um, okay, I have a movie we could you could put into the box. And um let that boot movie be <laughs> this movie is <laughs> called Lola. Uh it's from the 60s. It's um Jacques Demy's first film. It's a black and white film, it's French. Um, and it's nice and short, uh, but it is a brilliant film that uh, inspired uh, even some of the structure of linoleum. And um, it's kind of this ensemble piece about a town and how people are related within the town. And um, it's just a brilliant sort of like look at uh, the way in which we're all kind of threaded together. Um, so I'd recommend that one. Awesome. Well, thank, put it in the box. <laughs> uh, it, it's it's in the box. Uh, th thank you for taking the time. I don't think we got time for uh, the uh, the spoiler questions, but you know what? Maybe this is just a movie that I'm gonna have to have rattle around in my head and figure it out for myself. <laughs> Please do. Yeah, watch it a second. It's better to watch on the second time anyway. So yeah, but th thank you for your time, Colin. It's been great talking to you. Thanks, Eric, so much.